What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about some crazy sniper rifle data that I took uh, over the last couple days. I was going to do my recommended sniper loadouts video, and in doing that, I wanted to get some new data and make sure everything was still up to date with bullet velocities. Uh, and I also wanted to test bullet velocities in a more uh, practical sense for where it would actually make more sense than what I've done in the past. So that's what I went and did. But then when I did that, I found some weird stuff that I couldn't explain. And so that led to one more thing to test. And then that led to one more thing to test. And I have basically three full sets of data that we're going to go through today. Uh, I'm going to try to go through it as quick as possible and then do recommended loadouts at the end of the video. Uh, we will see if I get through it all. Uh, but there's some weird results in there that I don't understand. And maybe someone who understands game development understands uh, networking and things like that better than I do can help me understand this. But uh, before we get into that, we're going to go through a sponsored segment. So this video is sponsored. Go through the sponsored segment and then we'll get into all the new data. Our sponsor for today's video is NordVPN. So essentially, there's a lot of different companies and people out there that want access to your information. They want to see what you're browsing, what you're looking at, whether that's just to use uh, the data for advertising purposes or even more malicious things. Um, essentially, NordVPN will give you completely private browsing. So it takes your computer, connects it to a NordVPN server through an encrypted tunnel, and then from there, it goes to the internet. Um, they use all kinds of different IP addresses, so there's no way to track what you're what you're looking at. NordVPN will never keep logs of what you're viewing, so you're completely secure and completely safe from all these malicious outside sources. So if you're on my channel, you're obviously a gamer. So one of the big benefits for gamers is that you'll have access to region-locked discounts, region-locked games, and region-locked content. So if any of those things are only available in a certain country, all you have to do is VPN into that country and then reload the page and it'll act like you are in that country so you'll have access to that content. So a perfect example for me, one of my friends has been trying to get me to watch Star Trek Discovery for a long time, but unfortunately it's not available on the US Netflix. So all I have to do is open up NordVPN, literally just takes a few seconds, go to the United Kingdom, connect to UK, takes a couple seconds, boom, I'm connected to UK and all I have to do is reload Netflix and Star Trek Discovery will be available. So you can see now that if I go to Netflix and I search Star Trek, I can now see Star Trek Discovery, which is the show that's only available in the United Kingdom. Um, so it's super, super simple, really quick. And this works the same for video games. So if there's any game that's region locked or any discount that's region locked that you only have access in a certain country or a certain location, it's really easy to just connect to that location instantly with NordVPN and you'll have access to that content. If you're interested in checking out NordVPN and being able to browse the internet completely secure, gaming completely securely, having access to region locked games, discounts, and content, uh, be sure to check out my special link at nordvpn.com slash truegamedata. Uh, you get the two year plan plus four months for free and a big discount. Um, so be sure to check them out and thank you NordVPN for supporting the YouTube channel, supporting the website and sponsoring this video. All right, so I'm gonna try to tell the story of how this all happened. Basically, I was gonna make this sniper video. I wanted to make sure all my data was up to date and accurate. So I went back in and I tested all the bolt velocities for the base sniper rifles. And when I did that, I found crazy different results. We'll go over those results in a second. Um, but dramatically different bullet velocities for the base gun, like up to like 20% different than what I had in the past. So that's what this tweet was about. I said I found some really weird stuff. And then I said it was game changing stuff because it literally would have been game changing. Um, and then what happened was I wanted to confirm that they didn't tweak attachments either. So I went and tested the max bullet velocity build for all these guns as well. Uh, and then when I did that, I tweeted this after, after, I, after I tested them all at the max bullet velocity, which is what really 99% of people use. They all seem to be the same as what they were before or very close to the same as what they were before. So we'll go through that as well. And then I was also doing a different type of testing for this. So in the past, I've shot um, ATC from 500 meters away. You don't hardly ever take shots at 500 meters. And from previous testing I've done, um, the bullets in this game do slow down over time. So the longer they travel, the more they slow down, just like they would in real life with uh, wind resistance. Um, so they have tried to factor that into the game, but they also slow down at different rates. So what I wanted to do was test these at a more realistic distance. So I tried to test them at 100 meters uh, instead of 500 meters because that's, I think the average sniper engagement is probably from like 75 to 150. So 100 seems like a reasonable, uh, reasonable place to start for testing that. So move to 100 meters. And I also test it a little bit differently. When I'm shooting ATC, what I do is I watch the bullet and I watch this tracer. And as soon as the tracer disappears, that's when I stop the, the time measurement and I use that to calculate it. There's been some controversy in the past about people thinking that maybe the, um, the tracer doesn't exactly match where the actual physical bullet is in the game. Uh, and that is very possible. We know that's actually possible because the SPR, Norma rounds, and Lapua rounds, when they were hit scan bugged back in the day, the tracer still showed about 1,000 meters per second bullet velocity. So the tracer was much slower than the bullet in that case. 
And same with the Fennec, which was just bugged recently. Uh, it was infinite bullet velocity, and it had a tracer still, but the tracer was still moving at like the 250 meters per second that it used to. So it was actually a little bit disorienting trying to play with that because you're used to trying to correct for the tracers and hitting somebody at range. Um, but that's why there's been controversy about whether or not the actual bullet matches the tracer. So how I tested this time when I was doing my 100 meter test, I was close enough to the building that I could actually see the puff of smoke and debris come off the building when the bullet hit. Um, so I'm assuming that's where the actual physical bullet is rather than when the tracer disappears. And they didn't line up exactly. They were very close. They didn't line up exactly. Uh, I do think there's some slight delay in the amount of time it takes for that little smoke cloud to appear of the bullet actually impacting the building. Um, but overall, the numbers were very consistent and pretty good. So we'll go through all of that. But the last thing I wanted to do to confirm, or not really confirm, this was more of just a thing I was interested in. I wanted to go test whether or not hit markers were consistent. So if you shoot somebody that's 200 meters away, uh, is the hit marker going to be consistently showing up at the right time? And does the bullet velocity you get from calculating to that hit marker make sense? Um, and this is something Exclusive Ace used to test a long time ago when he found some really weird bullet velocity results. Um, so I went through, tested maximum bullet velocity build for all the snipers, shooting someone that was 200 meters away exactly, and counting the time from the hit marker um, to firing the gun. And I got bullet velocities for all of those, and it really came out with some really crazy results that to begin with I couldn't wrap my head around. Um, but I think I've sort of figured it out now, but again, the numbers didn't come out perfect even with my adjustments, so we'll go into that. But I just wanted to explain all the testing. There's a ton of testing for this video. This literally is probably my most, most uh, maybe not most, but one of the most in-depth videos I've ever done in terms of how much time it took behind the scenes. I literally spent all day the last two days testing this stuff and trying to figure it out. Uh, so let's go into the actual numbers, and I'll try to condense this down and make it make sense uh, for everybody. All right, this is a lot of data. It's pretty confusing. The results are hard to understand, but let's try it. So, the very first test I did was the 100, me 100 meter base bullet velocity test, and this was the impact test, looking for that actual uh, burst of smoke, debris, whatever you want to call it, coming off the building when the bullet actually impacts the building. Uh, I do think there's a slight delay, maybe one or two frames in between the time that it impacts and the time that that actually happens, but uh, we'll see that in the data as we go through. So, I tested every sniper rifle here. Um, this is the average. I did three tests, took the average standard deviation. Standard deviations were pretty small. Uh, tests were pretty consistent within just one or two frames different on average. Um, so the new bullet velocities are here. And then these are the old tests that I had from 500 meters. And then this is the new change, the delta of the two. So the new bullet velocity for the SPR was 30 meters per second slower at 100 meters. The car was 92 meters per second slower at 100 meters. The Pellington was 64 meters per second faster. LW3, 16 slower, ZRG, 2 slower, or 2 faster, Swiss, 47 faster, uh, M82, 36 slower, AX50, 21 slower, HDR, 120 slower, Dragonov, 82 slower, and Rytec, 56 slower. So, again, remember, these are different types of tests. So the original 500 meter tests, I was following the tracer, watching the tracer impact, and as soon as the tracer impacted, uh, the tracer would disappear. And that's not exactly the same frame where the, the burst of smoke when the bullet actually hits the wall happens. So that's where um, I think these numbers are lower, even though it's shorter because of that. I think there's a slight delay from when the bullet impacts to uh, when the burst of smoke appears. But I think that's a consistent delay for all different tests. Um, so I do think they've made some pretty significant base stat changes. Like I said, we'll talk about the max bullet velocity test here in a second. But I saw this, and this is when I tweeted that things were game-changing, because this is a huge difference for the HDR. Huge difference for the Car 98, huge difference for the Pellington, huge difference for the Swiss. Um, nobody used the Dragonov anyway, so I'm not going to talk about that. But basically, these were, I mean, these are game changing numbers, especially if attachments work the same. So, what I did directly after that, I retested these at 500 meters using my tracer, tracer method that I've used for everything in the past. And I found that, yes, the tracer calculated to 512 meters per second. So, it was 30, 40 meters per second slower than the Car 98. That's not as much of a difference as I measured with the new impact test. Uh, but still it is a little bit slower. Uh, and then the HDR, I did the exact same thing. I only did it for two guns. So the HDR, using the tracer test again, I measured at 654. Uh, so that was slightly faster actually than the impact test at 100 meters, but still 100 meters per second slower than it used to be. So I thought, still, these are game-changing results after I tested that. I was like, wow, that's still way different than it used to be. And then, just to make sure, I went and tested the max bullet velocity build. So I tested the Car 98 with its max bullet velocity, I tested the HDR with, with its max bullet velocity, and I found um, 1,000 meters per second with the Car 98 and 1,220 with the HDR, which is basically where they were before. So basically what I think they did, I think they went in, they changed the base bullet velocities for a bunch of these different snipers, 
but I think the end result is very similar to what it was before. After you put the attachments on, I think they modified the attachment modifiers to make the bolt velocity come out similar to where it was before, uh, even after these changes. But after this, I was like, okay, so the base gun is completely different. When I do the impact test, the max bolt velocity is the same. So I'm going to go test the max bolt velocity builds doing the impact test. So I did the same thing, exactly the same as test as this. I added one extra trial because the bullet's moving faster now, so there's more error in the measurements. Uh, just because one frame is a bigger percentage difference in the overall amount of time for the uh, for the bullet to travel to its target. So I did the same tests here. I uh, measured the total time, got the bullet velocity. So SPR came out. Standard deviations, again, were pretty good, about 30 meters per second standard deviation. Um, relatively consistent. I mean, that's literally like one frame. When you're shooting at only 100 meters, it's like one frame is, is about 30, 37, 25, something like that, uh, meters per second. So what I have is the old 500 meter max bullet velocity test, the new 100 meter max bullet velocity from impact testing. Uh, and this is the delta between the two. So the SPR was 131 meters per second slower at 100 meters than it was at 500 meters using the other test. Uh, Car 98 was 22 meters per second slower, so basically the same. Uh, Pellington was 74 meters per second faster. LW3 was 100 meters per second slower. The ZRG was 36 meters per second slower. The Swiss was 17 meters per second slower. M82, 85 meters per second slower. AX50, 120 meters per second slower. And HDR, 130 meters per second slower. So this is what I'm really confused about. Um, I don't know if I should trust the tracer or the impact. And because I didn't know that, I felt like I needed to go do another test. So right here, you see the old 500 meter, I had 1207. And then I retested that literally yesterday and it was 1220. So basically the same, that's probably just, I only did one test. So it's probably just an averaging uh, issue. It's probably one frame off or something. But then my new impact test for the HDR showed 1078 with the max bullet velocity build. So the impact test at 100 meters showed dramatically slower than the tracer test showed at 1220 meters or 1220 meters per second. Um, at 500 meters. So I don't exactly understand that. And because of that, I was like, okay, do I trust the impact or do I trust the tracer? I don't know. So what I did was I went and did the hit marker test. Um, basically what I did was I shot someone with the max bullet velocity builds who was 200 meters away four different times with every single sniper, with every single uh, fully max bullet velocity kitted sniper and measured all those bullet velocities. And you can see here, the bull velocities were super, super high when I tested them this way. So testing the hit marker had huge standard deviations, first of all. And I've always been afraid of testing the hit markers because I know um, latency and, and tick rate and all these things come into play there. And it's going to mess up with the results a lot. Um, but I never expected the numbers to be way higher than what I was getting elsewhere. So like good example, the Swiss was like the biggest outlier. The Swiss, I got 1800 meters per second. And that was just crazy. The ZRG came out 1732. HDR 1666. Um, so putting those next to the old max numbers, you can see these numbers are like between 100 and 800 meters per second higher than the old numbers I had, but they are massively varying. You can see these standard deviations, like I said, show that there's a huge variance. So this confused the crap out of me. I was, I was literally baffled for like five minutes. I was like, how, how are the bullet velocities coming out higher? If there's extra calculation time involved, there's latency involved, there's tick rate involved. How could they possibly come out higher? And then I thought about it for some time and I was like, okay, maybe it makes sense if uh, this is going to be really hard to explain. So I'll do my best. So imagine you're running, someone's hundred meters away and they're running at some point, if your latency is like hundred millis milliseconds and it takes the bullet 200 milliseconds to get to that target, the computer can calculate that as soon as the bullet is within 100 milliseconds of the target in terms of how long it would take to get there, that that person can no longer change their trajectory or the bullets obviously not going to change its trajectory but the person can't change their trajectory to miss that shot so i think it can give the hit marker faster in some cases because it calculates that well this person literally cannot get out of the way of this bullet with the information that the server has because of latency um so what i did there <laughs> this is just a huge rabbit hole after i tested that and i thought that, that was my theory that it was latency that was getting these higher numbers so the more latency you had basically the faster the average bullet velocity was going to look because the server could no longer get the information fast enough to say whether or not a person was going to miss that bullet or not. And this isn't necessarily making sniper shots easier. Basically what it would do is it would smooth out your target's movement. Um, so it might make it a little bit easier at higher, um, higher milliseconds of latency. But again, that brings instability and stuff into it too, which is just a whole other can of worms. 
But anyway, what I did was I went and tested this at 20 milliseconds of ping and 60 milliseconds of ping. And the results were exactly the same, which again, baffled me because I thought I'd figured it out. I thought it was latency. I thought that was how the bullet velocity could be faster. Um, so after thinking about that, I was like, oh crap. Yeah, latency is important, but server tick rate. Server tick rate is the thing that would really determine that more than latency because the bullet takes longer than latency to get there anyway. So it can calculate, oh, he shot this shot 67 milliseconds ago if he's on 67 ping. So essentially, tick rate is the thing that's going to be more important. That's when the server sees the information and when the server updates the information and sends out that information to all the players playing. Server tick rate, if you don't know what that is, it's how often the server receives information and sends out information to all the players in the lobby in, on that server. Um, so after that, I was like, well, dang, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's tick rate. And I tested tick rate a long time ago. I got like 40 to 50 hertz in Warzone. And the only thing that would really make sense, I'll go through the math here in a second, for what these numbers came out to would be something more close to like 15 hertz or 20 hertz. Um, so I went back and I tested, since this was all done in Plunder, I thought, oh, maybe Plunder has different tick rates. Um, so I went back and tested this in Plunder, tested tick rate in Plunder, and I found... First of all, my original tests in Warzone, I did them wrong, so I said 40 to 50. Um, it's exactly what I got this time, but I noticed when actually looking at the packets of information this time that it sends two at the exact same time, so the number was exactly doubled for what it should have been. The two packets probably just hold different information, like one probably has player location, the other one has bullet location or something in the world. So um, there's just two packets that go at the exact same time, so that's why the number was doubled before. So I found 20 to 24 hertz this time uh, doing it correctly. And so what I tried to do was I said, okay, well, if it's 20 to 24 hertz, that means that when I shot in between each tick rate, on average, is going to be exactly half of that. So on average, maybe one time I, I shot one, one tick or one, one, yeah, one part of a tick into that tick. And then the other time I was closer to the end of the tick. So the average across all those different trials, all these different trials would be exactly half of the tick rate because some of them will be close to the start of the tick, some of them will be close to the end of the tick, but overall they'd average towards the, the middle of the tick. So um, doing that, I did all the math, I added all this in, uh, and we'll go over that in a second. I haven't cleaned up all the data yet, so I'm gonna go do, do that, and then we'll talk about how that adjusts these numbers. All right, so we got those massively high bullet velocities here when testing to the hit marker at 200 meters. So what I tried to do was try to adjust that for the tick rate. This is the same logic I was just talking about. So these are my pings at the time of testing. So 68 for the first five and then 25 for the last um, six, I guess. Uh, and like I said, the ping didn't really seem to make any difference in terms of uh, how much faster the bullet velocity was than expected. So that's when I started thinking it was probably tick rate. Um, so basically I did the, the tick rate adjustment here. Uh, I'm not gonna go over all the calculations, but so tick rate of 20 means that the average time between packets is uh, 50 milliseconds or 0 0.05 seconds. And then the average time during that tick where the shot was taken, sometimes it would be at the very start of the tick, sometimes it'd be at the very end of the tick, but over the average of all four times nine guns here, um, it should be somewhere relatively close to 25. Obviously it's not perfect. I don't have a huge sample size here, um, but she should be relatively close to that. So I'm also assuming that there's some sort of calculation time or something involved. This is where it's just, hand wavy like I don't I don't know I'm trying to justify these numbers I don't know how they could exist um, completely I do think tick rate I think I'm on the train right train of thought here I do think tick rate comes into it I think latency comes into it a little bit um, but I'm assuming there's some sort of calculation time for whether or not a bullet hits on the server side so it's not going to be immediate immediate in terms of once it gets that information it's not like there's just instantaneous calculation on whether or not something happens it has to calculate something and then send that information back to you um, so I just put in an extra 10 milliseconds for that. I have literally no idea how much time that would take. Um, that's the one thing that's a little confusing to me about this. But basically when you do that, you get these adjusted bullet velocities, um, which make a lot more sense. So you can see SPR at 1111, car 98. Again, there's some outliers just because testing the hit marker is so inconsistent because the tick rate's only 20 hertz. Um, there's going to be some big outliers still. Um, but using this adjustment... For the tick rate actually brings the numbers sort of somewhat in line with where they should have been so car 98's 1200 meters per second obviously way faster than uh, it actually is when you look at the tracer or, or the impact um pellington at 1137 lb3 1154 zrg 1291 uh swiss 1300 again this is one of those huge outliers i don't know why this was so high uh this is only over four tests though so like i said there is a big variance because the server is only 20 20 hertz so 
Um, these actual numbers I don't trust. I'm trying to get like a pattern across all the weapons to see if using tick rate in the calculation can actually make it closer to where, where we would expect. And it does that. It takes them from being, you know, 1400 up to 1800 mirrors per second. It brings them down to 878 up to the maximum, which was the Swiss at 1300. So it brings them much more in line with where they should be in terms of what we know. Um, so comparing that to the 100 meter impact test, uh, SPR was 67 meters per second faster, car 98, 182 meters per second slower, uh, Pellington 93 meters per second slower, the LW3 was 46 meters per second slower, ZRG 44 meters per second, Swiss 311 meters per second. Again, I think that's just the tick rate being super inconsistent. I don't think the I, I, I'm 100% sure the Swiss is not actually 1300 meters per second. Don't trust these numbers. These numbers were just me testing to see if I could figure out logically why they would be so high with the hit marker. And I think this does kind of prove that uh, what I was doing showed that. So uh, I'm not going to read the rest of these, but they all kind of bring that in line. So the numbers that I trust the, the most out of all of this um, are the 100 meter bullet of or the 100 meter max bullet of velocity impact test. So this is what I'm going to go off of on the website. So, and for my recommendations. So looking at this, um, Car 98 and Swiss are still about exactly the same, right over a thousand meters per second. ZRG is still the fastest by far at 1247. Um, so it doesn't really change a lot. The ones that are massively impacted, I would say, we got a nice buff to the Pellington. The Pellington is going to be coming in line a little bit faster than the Car 98 and the uh, Car 98 and the Swiss, which is where it should be because it has some downsides that those don't have. HDR though, this is the big the big outlier. I'm not sure about the HDR. Uh, this is the one that confuses me because. It looks the same when you look at the tracer still, but the impacts were actually way slower. But we know the HDR has a high bullet velocity. It feels great. Um, as far as I'm aware, nobody's like stopped using it. I think it still feels like it used to feel. So I don't know what this is about. Uh, maybe they were bad tests or something. I don't know. I need to double check HDR. I am going to go back through and check all this stuff, but I had just spent so much time researching all this that I wanted to get the information out to you guys. And I tried to, uh, tried to present it in a digestible way. I know it's kind of a, a lot and it's very confusing. I mean, I'm, I'm freaking confused still, so I just thought it was really interesting. I wanted to make this video and talk about it, but um, I don't know if I'm going to do recommended builds in this video, or maybe I'll make a follow-up video tomorrow with my recommended sniper builds and uh, sniper support guns, just because this video is already super long. So yeah, I've decided I'm going to do that. So this is just going to be the video talking about all this crazy data that I took and trying to explain everything, because the video is already like 20 minutes long. Um, so tomorrow I'll do... Recommended builds for the snipers, recommended loadouts, uh, also recommended sniper support guns to go with those snipers because that can vary somewhat based on which gun you're using. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the content and thank you again NordVPN for sponsoring this video. What that does is allows us to, um, you know, push the company forward. We're trying to eventually maybe hire some new people to work on, especially when like Battlefield comes out. Uh, it allows me to focus more time on the YouTube channel. Um, so it really does help. So thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you as always. I hope you found this interesting. I honestly still haven't completely wrapped my head around it, if you couldn't tell. Um, I'm not sure what to make of some of the results, like the HDR impact test. That one's really weird to me. AX50 impact test is really weird to me. Uh, SPR impact test as well. Really weird to me. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe you guys can make some sense of it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, your theories on how all this data came out. Because you can see the standard deviations were good. Like, they were consistent. So that's what's really confusing to me is I don't understand if the data was consistent, why it's so so much different than the tracer test, unless these guns just don't follow the tracer and we've been bamboozled into thinking the HDR feels good when it's actually not that good. Because I don't think people have said the HDR feels any different recently. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this. I'm very curious to hear your opinions. Um, I'll do more testing in this future. If you have ideas for, for better ways for me to test this or, or uh, anything I can do to get better bullet velocity results, I would... I'm fully on board for that. So let me know in the comments again, but um, I'll see you guys on the next video. Tomorrow we'll have all those recommended loadouts and builds for you.